Stevie, first, thanks for being here. Second, let's just let's start with the race itself. And it seemed like it was going to be a fairly typical, straightforward playoff special. All the playoff drivers have felt like running in the top 10, except for Chris Busher for a lot of the race. And then what we all thought was going to be final pit stop, Kyle Larson makes the, this mistake, runs into Ryan Blaney, hits the barrels, red flag, and it seemed like the race just sort of went off the rails from that point forward. So is that was that kind of, I know you're always big on turning points. Was that the big turning point in this race? Well, it really was. I think if that pit cycle happens clean, um, then perhaps we get a, a, a mundane Miami race. Uh, you know, last year, only two playoff cars finished inside the top 10, and I was shocked that there was that much of an issue. This year, it was the haves and the have-nots. One through four were all playoff cars. The next playoff car was outside the top 20. So there wasn't a playoff car between 5th and 20th. Um, and I think that kind of speaks to it. Now, three of those had issue. Chris Busher had an issue, but his issue was just not fast. They just didn't have a very good car um, and didn't have a very good performance. But without a doubt, the moment was the Larson Blaney coming to pit road where Larson just misjudged his entry speed versus Blaney. Um, you know, in the end, you I'm going to hang the mistake on Kyle Larson. So I look at it like this. It's no different than if I'm sitting behind you at a red light, Nate. If the light turns green and you don't go and I drive into your rear bumper, it's still my fault. Just because the light was green doesn't mean I can leave. I still have to wait for you to leave. That's exactly the right. same thing we saw between Blaney and Kyle Larson. I did a little, you know me, I love my numbers. So I dig a little dip. Uh, I, I did a little digging. First round of green flag pit stops. This is pit in. So this is kind of middle of the backstretch to pit road entry. Kyle Larson beats Ryan Blaney by nearly a half second. At 114, he beats him in that same stretch by nearly a second. Hmm. So I'm going to give Larson the assumption that he was going to make pit road speed. Tough assumption, but he had done it twice, so I'll say he was going to. Um, if he doesn't hit the barrels, it's the move of the race. I mean, he passes the 12 car in that pit cycle all because of pit entry. So that's what he was doing, and that shows just how much you have to push. We're the round of eight. We're not the round of 12 anymore. We're not the regular season. We're not the round of 16. Average is below average. You need to be above average. Now, the risk of trying to be above average um, is you saw it, right? Kyle Larson absolutely either was going to wreck Ryan Blaney or hit the barrels. He chose the barrels. Uh, but you got to hang the mistake on Kyle Larson, even though it was an impressive run to pit road. And is it also a case of just divergent approaches here? You know, like you said, this is what you got to do. This is the kind of risks. This is how much you got to push it for Kyle Larson to get in front of Blaney, come out in first and probably control the race to the end because he was so good throughout that race. But the, the divergent approaches of Kyle Larson's locked in. He's got the win from Las Vegas. So he can afford to push the envelope a little bit more. And then Ryan Blaney, who we've seen him have these pit mistakes uh, throughout the playoffs, just mistakes in general, but he's been caught on speeding in, in the pits before. He's tiptoeing, it seemed like, a little bit more. Was it just a case of one guy's got one objective, the other guy's got another, and they just sort of collided there? So a little bit, I think, is situational awareness, and I do think Blaney was being a little conservative, uh, which I applaud, right, because speeding there is just a mistake they can't have happen. So I do think Blaney was managing it correctly. But I don't think what we saw out of the five car was situational awareness. I think that's Kyle Larson. I think that's Kyle Larson mm -hmm. 365. I mean, that's Kyle Larson every single day <laughs> he races, whether it has a wing on it, whether it has treaded tires or slicks, whether it's on the high banks or the flats. Uh, and I'm guessing whether it's IndyCar or NASCAR. I mean, that's Kyle Larson. He is pedal down, doesn't care about the setup. Tell me what you need me to do. I'm going to go do it. Tell me what you need me to do next stage, next stage. Don't clutter my mind or waste my time with the plan. You just just shoot me out of the can and let me go. And that's just Kyle Larson. Like, I don't think if he would have won last week or didn't win last week, he hits the barrels. Like, yeah. I don't think it makes a difference coming to pit road. I think he is all in every lap, not throwing. You no, know, it was a mistake. Um, and he'll continue to learn from them. But, you know, he's this is who he is. He's a he's a multi-time race winner each and every year and multi-time DNF guy. This point system actually probably couldn't be better for Kyle Larson. I don't know how much he would succeed in a 36 point championship or 36 race championship. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and hey, we saw that the last round where, you know, he essentially like almost took himself out, but he rallied and then he wins the opener of the round of eight. Because, like you said, I don't think he modulates that style of his. That's just. That's I, listen, I like the firepower. Yeah. Like, I like the firepower. Uh, in today's 
short memory, short term entertainment, uh, social media, 30 second videos, instant rewards, instant gratification. I like a race team like that. I like a guy that has absolute firepower. Name a racetrack other than a super speedway where Kyle Larson isn't top three favorites in Vegas. Doesn't exist because mm -hmm. what you saw in this round is Kyle Larson's year. Every race, you say, who was good? Well, Kyle Larson. And then you say, but. And it's either, but he won, or something happened and he DNF'd or didn't have a chance to win. But he was in every conversation. That's impressive. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.